What up players, it's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to my little update video and also a build video for these awesome All Quiet on the Martian front tanks. So I built them up, I painted them. I'm also uh, knee deep in getting done with a Bretonian project and a Ogre Kingdoms project. An Ogre Kingdoms project, proper grammar. But in the meantime, I've also been painting up these awesome tanks. So let's check it out. Uh, you're able to do both of these tanks in the starter kit. You've got your Mark III steam tank. This is alternate fiction, alternate history for World War I where like uh, aliens attack and America has to rely on steam power rather than oil power. And uh, I love it. I think it's really cool. You could do some really awesome weathering effects, which I've done here. And I'm really happy with it. Or you can also build this MK... Oh no, that was the MK2. This is the MK3, the Mark III. And the only difference is that you've got sponsons on the side and this little command section at the top there. I use a lot of AK interactive enamels and pigments. The stars are from the transfer sheet, all quiet on the Martian front. The numbers are all from all quiet on the Martian front. But I thought I'd do something creative and on the left side, or the right side of all the Mark II tanks that I have, these guys, I've put a little spade symbol from the Cadian Shock Troopers transfer sheet. So they're a lot of fun, really easy to build, a lot of fun to paint, and I'm gonna take you through making them right now. So, you've got your sprue here. And the pieces we're going to use are the wheels. And I'm going to start with these and these uh, hatches. So the instructions are really easy to follow as well. Took my little hobby knife here. I'm doing what you should never do: is cut in towards yourself. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just taking my chances with it. If I cut myself, then then don't do what I did. And if I don't cut myself, still don't do what I did. Cut away. I think for me it's just it's faster for me to cut towards myself and I've given myself so many nicks and cuts with my knife uh, up till now that it's just oof, I'm used to it I guess so you can see that the uh, hatch is hinged toward the back so let's take a look at how we're gonna build it the little hole there uh, which I assume to be like a fuel vent or some kind of exhaust port is towards the front and then uh, point it up, kind of like a Lehman Rust tank. So I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and I've seen some people use it before, but I've really seen uh, Old Wise Owl, I believe it was, who used it and I, I asked him about it in one of his videos because I'd, I'd seen it at my local store, but I wasn't sure if it was any better than the Model Master liquid uh, plastic cement that I use. It is fantastic. I, he, he swore by it. He said it was really great. So I decided to pick it up. You get so much and you don't use that much each time. And uh, I built up all my tanks with it so far and I'm still like right at the top. So very happy with it. Thank you Wise Owl for suggesting it. Now if I was to build a uh, Mark III tank then I would cut out some sponsons and these sections for the sponsons, the, the guns and the uh, sponsons themselves, but I am not. Instead, let's back up a bit. We're gonna cut out the bottom part of the main body, as well as the top part. I've also found that going upside down like this makes it a lot easier to snip. Thank you. 
Sorry, I can't pull back anymore. Out of frame. Uh, yeah, I've been really working hard to finish this Bretonian project that's been kind of on my plate since before the July painting challenge. And uh, I'm really happy that it's wrapped up. And also I have an Ogre's Kingdom project that is just about wrapped up as well. And things are going really, really well for me. So um, I hope all of your projects are doing well. The only thing that's not going accordingly to plan is I don't have um, my Death Corps of Krieg kind of slowed down because I'm kind of waiting for some um, some 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 more AK interactive uh, pigments that I use as well as some bases for some of the, the models. I kind of want to get them all done together so put them on hold for a little bit. I've got some time to worry about the, the Kriegers. They're not really uh, gonna be due for uh, to a client who's gonna take them for a couple more months, so that should be fine. What have I just cut out? This exhaust port in the back, super important. There's a little nub on the bottom. You want to make sure you don't trim that off. I thought you're supposed to trim it off like it was just a piece of flash, but it is not. It is actually supposed to be the peg that locks the port, uh, the pipe rather, into the port for the pipe. The port for the pipe and the pipe for the port. trimming the bottom and the top here. So what I've learned is the easiest way to do this is to have the wheels done first, the tracks rather, and then do the main body. Then when this is dry, you can apply it or add the, add the sides, the wheels, tracks to it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting rubber cement right, or the plastic cement, extra thin cement right there, and I am popping, popping it together right there. And I'm kind of putting some cement on the sides. Now what I'm going to do is just put it on as evenly, but as, as much as I can. Now what you could do is, um, like my other models here, I just glue this top hatch right on top. But what I'm gonna do is try to model it so that it's open, because you actually, the inside of the cab is open, so so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can uh, paint the inside. That's what I'm trying to say. Get these tracks on. They snap real easily right on top of each other, just like that. Okay, like I said, here's the port for the pipe. It's interesting because it's, I guess it's the alternate history is that because the aliens came down while we're kind of in our uh, at the close of the locomotive age um, the big influence for these vehicles were were trains locomotives and I think so from reading what I've read in the fluff so um, they're coal fed in the back I guess like they've got a crew that feeds coals into it and into this furnace here and that kind of provides the, the locomotion. Come on baby. All right. So now it's important to remember this is the hatch door, the, the thinner, smaller one. And then you've got a little, uh, a separate one or the, for the front here. And you can tell this is for the front because it has this little notch in it right there, if you can see it. And that goes right down the center of the notch there. So you wanna kinda of line it up and lock it in just like that. 
actually, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it with the open hatch doors because it's kind of like modeled on. Ah, bummer. I wanted to kind of have them like hanging open, but it looks like kind of sealed. Yeah. I've seen them done in the book though, in the rule book. The big rule book. There are some examples of the Mark II steam tank, or steamer, with the, um, with the hatch open. Here. Ugh. You can see right there, that's kind of what I wanted to do, but I don't know how I'm going to be able to model that. Maybe they just kind of converted it with some more extra plastic card. Eh, it's alright. Maybe uh, if I decide to expand this force. The reason why I'm painting it up, just like in my spare time, is just because I want to try to dive into an alternate system, just a different system. Just, you know, because I love 40k, I love fantasy, but uh, something's real quick and fast, but that's still kind of like a collectibles game is kind of what I'm looking for. Boom! Right there. Uh, you have these little ridged part in the front, doors near the back. Oh, the last part of your sprue which you're going to need is one of these cannons for the front. Um, tricky thing about these cannons is that they look so similar. Here, let me show you. This one that goes on the Mark II, this guy, has like a smooth flat barrel. Or it will. You just clean the mold line off like this. And the other one has, like the other cannon, has a like little tip at the barrel. So, I'll show you. Paint it up. These are the two. And they look so similar. You can see this guy's got a little tip at the barrel and this guy doesn't, smooth, but um, when you look at them on the sprue, they're all lined up next to each other. There's, they all look very similar. So I made a mistake with one of my Mark III's and I put the wrong cannon on it, but I don't think you can really tell unless you know, you're a strict stickler for modeling exactly what it's supposed to be on the model. I'm just gonna say I didn't know, and there you go. So look at that, in just a little bit amount of time that you've been watching this video, I built up a Mark II steam tank. So he's gonna join my other Mark II steam tanks, let's see if I can find a third one, right here. And I'm gonna paint them up, put the little transfers on them, and do a little bit of weathering on the side. I've already done the all of the Mark III steam tanks. What I want to know from you guys is, would you be interested in seeing me do a video series and continue to do video series on, on my All Quiet on the Martian front? Because they're so fast to paint. Like literally every time I took a break between painting a Pegasus or a Knight, I would just pick up the brush and do a couple, a couple layers on each of these guys and then end up doing the the weathering, the chipping, very simple, very fun and uh, very rewarding to be able to do, you know, six vehicles in the amount of time where it would normally take me to uh, get a base coat on a bigger vehicle. So let me know what you think, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.